to put it over there. Okay. Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> I just about fell out of my chair when, uh, when Bill said all those years ago, um, a great, let's do it. And then we had to go find the, had to go find the money. And it, it was WNET and some of the rest of us too. I want to thank the Interfaith Center for tonight's award, which I accept gratefully on behalf of all of us who work on the program. And especially, of course, to the Lilly Endowment for its extraordinary generosity to Mutual of America and to everyone else who has helped with the funding. Thanks to WNET, to Neil Shapiro, Steven Segaler, Leslie Norman, and my great friend and our executive producer, Arnie Labaton, and to all our wonderful colleagues who have created and assembled the program every week. This past weekend, as Bill suggested, <clears throat> we did our 927th show. People, <laughs> people used to ask us occasionally whether there's enough religion news to fill a weekly program, and our experience is you bet especially since the election of the outspoken and quotable Pope Francis, who is surely God's gift to all religion news writers. <laughs> I also want to thank Jerry Solomon, our first executive producer who is here tonight. He's not only a gifted broadcaster, but is also the head of the journalism department here at Queens College. Among his many achievements, it was Jerry who figured out that day long ago in St. Louis that if we rolled the camera at exactly the right place and time, and if the uh, reporter present could possibly be persuaded that he was only going to get one take, we could do a stand-up just as the Pope Mobile turned the corner. <laughs> From the beginning of religion and ethics, we've insisted that we are reporters, not televangelists. We cover all religions and all expressions of spirituality, but we do so as journalists, not preachers. I must say just in passing that having come from a long line of preachers, it is sometimes a little difficult not to step over into their territory but I hope I have uh, managed to be more reporter than preacher. I remember wondering whether that attitude would hurt us among some evangelicals, but Richard Land, the chief spokesperson for the Southern Baptist Convention, said, as long as you respect the religious impulse, you'll be all right. We have, and so far, as far as I know, we're all right. We discovered early on that far from feeling threatened or offended by stories about other religions, people like discovering how others worship. So we often run a segment called Belief in Practice in which someone explains what one of his or her particular holy days or, or celebration is all about. Buddhist monks make a beautiful sand mandala and then throw it away. Sufi Muslims whirl, Mexican Catholics crawl on their knees to venerate Our Lady of Guadalupe. Hindus plunge into the Ganges. And I've discovered this variety of religious practice, that not least the wonderful concept in Judaism known as Tikkun Olam. This Become, being God's partners in repairing the world. What a great idea. <clears throat> we have also frequently done profiles of eloquent men and women of many faiths, people I see as great souls, and asked them about their deepest beliefs. And this is one part of the program that I have enjoyed being associated with the most. Before he died, William Sloan Coffin told us, 
Almost every square inch of the earth's surface is soaked with the tears and blood of the innocent, and it's not God's doing, it's our doing. It's human malpractice. The writer Fred Beekner said all his life he's had glimpses of things that made him suspect the presence of something extraordinary beyond the realm of the immediate. He urged all of us to stay on the alert for such glimpses. Marilyn Robinson echoed that, recalling her childhood in the mountains of Idaho, where she said, it always felt like presence, capital P, presence. And Archbishop Tutu likened prayer to sitting in front of a warm stove on a cold morning. I don't have to do anything, he said. I just have to be there, quiet. We keep good company. <laughs> Poll data suggests that more and more people say they have no formal religious affiliation. Meanwhile, people are getting their news in more and more ways, and every news organization is trying to deliver their stories to wherever those audiences are. As we in WNET do this, it helps enormously that there is an organization as distinguished as the Interfaith Center that is telling us and the world that you like our work. Thank you for tonight's great honor and for all the encouragement that comes with it.